Hey, what's going on guys? IO Studios here for another video. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do some depth of field in Cinema 4D and Octane Render. So, um, yeah, let's get started. First thing you're going to want to make sure that you have is an Octane camera. So, you want to go up to your live viewer here, objects, and click the Octane camera. That will automatically add you in one for you. Uh, I already have one, so I'm just going to delete that. But um, that's what you want to do to get your Octane camera. Okay, once you have that, click on the tag. Uh, okay, I'm going to go on from this list from top to bottom. So, um, I'm going to grab the, uh, okay, autofocus. This will automatically set the camera to focus um, basically at the center of the screen. That's what that does. Um, focal depth. This is if you're doing manual focus. And I'm going to talk about that later. But um, the aperture is actually what controls the intensity of the depth of field. So uh, if we increase this, <clears throat> see here, I'm going to try uh, 0.12. Okay, you can see here it will blur this a bit. Um, but not, you know, not too much. Um, this depends on your scene scale. You see, this is in centimeters. So if you're a very large scene, and you're looking at it from far away, you want your depth of field, you're going to need to increase that aperture to, you know, sometimes up to 30 or, you know, down to 0 0.1 like this scene. So yeah, it really depends on your scene. You just want to kind of tweak it until it looks good. Okay. Um, so the autofocus, as you can see, automatically focus on the tree in front of you, uh, the tree in front of the camera. But if you would like to focus on this point, for example, there's a few ways of doing that. So the first one, we disable autofocus always. And then the focal depth, you have to kind of tweak that, you know? Um, you know, set it to like, let's see here, 0 0.5, um, 6, 9, you know? Starting to get a bit, getting this into focus. And you can do that and it kind of works. But what's easier is just clicking the focus picker here, clicking anywhere on your image, like right here by this tree. And it automatically focuses there. You know, you want to focus on the ground here. It'll do that. And as we click here, you notice the focal depth down here is changing. So Octane is, is figuring out exactly how far that object is from the screen. And it is um, it is focusing on that. So we'll just leave it like this. Um, my focus like this. Disable our focus picker. Now, the aperture aspect ratio. <clears throat> if you increase this, it will dramatically stretch your image vertically. If you decrease it, it will um, squish it vertically as well, uh, but I don't tend to use this like really ever. There are cameras in the real world that are realistic and have this property. I just don't think it looks good, and I um, I don't use it ever. But you know, if you have a good scene, use it appropriately. Uh, it could look good um, for sure. Anyway, um, the aperture edge. Now I'm just going to use a compare here, so store render buffer. Okay, and I'm going to increase the aperture edge. And while it's rendering here, I'll show you. After Edge, essentially, you see these little bokeh um, blobs here. They are, uh, obviously, they are right in the middle, and then they fade out, right? They fade out. Um, if we have the Aperture Edge higher up, it's going to mean instead, you can see here, we'll look at this one right here, that it will be dark in the middle, or sorry, it'll be bright at the edges, and then kind of fade in towards the middle. And I tend to use this quite often because I think it, I think it personally looks really good. Um, so we're going to use uh, a little bit. We're going to use 1.5 just for now. This is Torland. I think that looks pretty good. Um, you know, it depends on your scene, though, what kind of look you're going for, what kind of feel you're going for. Um, the bokeh sound, side count. Now, this is how many sides the actual um, blobs here, bokeh blobs, uh, have. And I'm just going to skip over that for a second, and we're going to go straight to bokeh roundness. And um, I'm going to decrease this to zero so bokeh side count rotation around us these all work together okay um so whoops after edge should be 1.5 okay um the side count if we have this set to something like i'll show you three is the lowest you can go and if we let this render for a second you'll see that all the bokeh blobs they are no longer blobs they are now triangles um let it render here just a bit more and you can see we're seeing the outlines of triangles here. Um, if we increase it to four, we will begin to see the outline of squares. I'm gonna let this render just for a second. And th these can look good, you know. If, if you do this right, if you execute it correctly, um, under the appropriate circumstances, obviously, square and triangle, bouquet blobs can look good. But generally, you're gonna wanna do something like a value of um, six or something, I'll show you. This looks, looks pretty much like Minecraft, if you guys know what that is. Um, you know, depends on your scene, what you want to go for. Um, but I like to use a value of like maybe eight or something. 
And it'll give you, like, a, that's a hexagon, I believe. Pretty sure that's the right word for eight sides. <laughs> um, and it looks pretty good, you know? Uh, six or eight sides, 10 or 12 even. Um, but the bokeh roundness will control how sharp the edges are on these. So if I let this render forever, it would become, or not forever, but if I let this render for a long time, it would become, um, all these bokeh blobs would become perfect uh, hexagons. But if we increase the bokeh roundness to like 0.5 or something, it kind of smooths out the edges and makes it more into a circle. Okay, the, the higher this bokeh roundness is, the more it'll kind of, melt the um the bokeh shape into a circle so that's that the bokeh rotation that is pretty self-explanatory it will rotate the shapes it will rotate the um the bokeh blobs um i don't really use this you know I'm sure there's a good use case for it but i don't really use it um and that's pretty much it those are all the settings for depth of field that wasn't too hard was it um so yeah depth of field it's pretty easy in octane um definitely not a lot of effort there uh yeah, these settings here, these aren't really relevant and not really super useful, so I'm not going to go over them. But, um, yeah, that's that. So, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and, um, yeah, I'll see you all later. Peace.